Hello and welcome to another podcast, Manna. I'm Pastor Jeff Glenn, and it's my pleasure to take you through the Word each week. We're still in Genesis, and today we'll be in chapter 33. And I call today's uh, topic here the message, The Reckoning. So we've seen where Jacob has traveled from this, uh, the the pillar of rocks, the the stone, the the rock in a hard place, as we've called it. Now he's now he's at the reckoning. He is meeting his brother Esau. So from verse one, now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maid servants. So you can you can almost sense the the uh, the dread or the terror perhaps, in Jacob's heart uh, when he looked up, you know, following this wrestling match with the Lord, he looks up and here comes his brother Esau with these 400 men. And this, that number, 400 men, is, is uh, been associated with a, a battle array. So, so it looks as if Esau is coming at him, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, presumably carrying a grudge and, and bringing with him these 400 men to exact a reckoning against Jacob for his behavior. And so Jacob does the prudent thing and, and the honorable thing. He, he seeks to take steps to protect his, his family by separating them into different camps. And um, you know, then we also see this attitude change in Jacob as well, where, where there once was this presumptuous kind of proud man who was trying to take every angle that he could to, to get ahead. You know, now he's... Um, Humility. He's approaching Esau in this attitude of humility and contrition. And so uh, Jacob, who's now called Israel by God because of his wrestling match, he, he's bowing repeatedly. He's showing submission as Esau and, and he are coming to, to meet each other. Um, he's previously sent uh, forth all of these gifts of the flocks and herds. And so he's doing all that he can to show the contrition to Esau. And um, when we flash back, we see why. Uh, back to Esau's vow in chapter 27. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of, my, of mourning my father are at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. And so this was Esau's vow. It was very much in Jacob's mind that this was his mindset towards his brother. And so now we contrast that with verse 4. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And so we have this moment of this reunification where, um, you know, in the movies there would be this great swelling music, a big wide shot, and, and um, everything would, um, would turn out um, happy, and they would live happily ever after. Then we get into this um, this exchange um, between Esau and Jacob, and and so we we see all of this happening, you know, what under what we would consider God's sovereignty, because we see this dramatic change from Esau one vowing to kill his brother till now running to meet him. Um, embracing him, falling on his neck, kissing him, showing all of these outward signs that he was extremely happy to see his brother and that all of this animosity had somehow left him. And so there's, there's several ways that we can view this interaction. And, um, you know, the, the straightforward read, you know, that Esau is truly happy to see Jacob and, and Jacob is, is contrite um, and, and doesn't want to impose upon Esau's um, hospitality. Um, but, and let's read through this so we see what we're talking about here. And so um, they are talking about, um, after this meeting here, Esau's questioning, like, why did you send me all of these things? And Esau's saying, well, they were, they were sent as a gift to, to, to find favor. And um, then we get to verse 13. Now Jacob said to him, "My," because Esau is saying, We'll, we'll come back to Seir with me and, and live with me, and I'm going to lead the way, and I'll go before you. And, and Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flocks will die. Please let my Lord go on ahead before his servant, and I will lead slowly at a pace 
with which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord at Seir. And Esau said, Now let me leave some people with you who were with me. But he said, What is their need? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkoth, built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkoth. And so this exchange about um, Esau saying, hey, come, come back to my, my place, my dwelling place in Seir. And, and Jacob saying, no, it's, it's a pretty long journey. If we're going to um, push the people to get there in a day, they're, they're going to be they're going to die, and, and so just let me go at my own place, and I'll meet you there. But then he ends up going to a different place and setting up his household there, and then eventually uh, he moves on to a place called Shechem, which there's a lot to say about that uh, maybe at another time. And so we, we don't really know what the, the motivation is here, right? So some have suggested that this is really just from Jacob's nature as, as a deceiver, like his his intent was never to go to Seir in the first place, so he's just trying to, to kind of distance himself from Esau because he doesn't trust Esau's intentions, um, or, inten- or Esau's intentions entirely, um, you know, valid or, or, or just, um, or is it um, just sort of this sibling one-upsmanship that I think there's a little bit of that here um, as we look at this. And, and so we see that the first thing that we see here um, is when Esau says in verse 8, then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company with which I met? And he's talking about the, the flocks and herds that, that Jacob had set ahead to, to show him that he was sending presents and wasn't coming in war. Um, and, but he says to Jacob, he says, uh, these are to find, oh, Jacob says to Esau, these are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said to him, I have enough, my brother, keep what you have for yourself. So he's essentially saying, nope, I got plenty. Like, I'm not going to take your, your stuff because I have plenty. And then Jacob counters with, no, if I've found favor with your, in your sight, then receive my present insomuch as I've seen your face as though I've seen the face of God. And you were pleased with me. So, so some could see this as a little bit of, of flattery, trying to um, n- not put Jacob under Esau, but to, again, keep him at arm's length. And then he says, please take my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me. So again, kind of reminding Esau, um, you know what? God's dealt generously with me, graciously with me, and I have enough. So they're, so they're both kind of saying that... Um, you know, they, they each have enough. And so that's another way to look at it as well. Um, and so we, we, we see eventually, though, that no matter what view you take of this, that essentially that God's will is being done. And what God wanted, which was a people who were holy, right, separated um, unto him, we see that this is beginning to happen. We see that Jacob has been called out of living with with Laban, and we remember that Laban was worshiping all sorts of household idols and, and other idols, and God wants to be worshipped for who he is. Uh, Jacob had committed to that, so he's being called out of that, and then now he's being called, um, or having this temptation of, of going and residing with Esau, and we know that Esau had already married Canaanite women, and so those kind of religious practices were part of Esau's household and family and practice, and we see Jacob um, being, for whatever reason, being led to this place in Sukkoth and then later to Shechem, but really separating himself out of both of those possibilities, which is clearly what the Lord had in mind uh, to make sure that he was the one being worshipped and not um, foreign foreign gods. And so, um, like I said, even though the, these two didn't have this big, you know, movie happy ending where they lived heavily, happily ever after, um, you know, we do see that God's will, you know, is not going to be confounded by, you know, this family infighting or one-upsmanship or dysfunction. We know that God's will will be done. And so hopefully that's encouraging for you. So um, until next week, stay encouraged and stay in the Word.